right, so um, Honorable E.T. Mensa, let's talk a bit about Accra. Mm -hmm. And um, you have indicated that you were mayor of Accra for what, 10 years, 1982 to 1992. And during that time, Accra underwent quite some change. You've already alluded to some of the things and what guided you, what were the guiding principles, which is the old Accra plan and the like. We have a new regional minister in the person of Henry Quarte, mm -hmm. and he's rolled out the Make Accra Work Again campaign. He has been praised about this, but there are two issues. One, should he be the one doing this, or it should be the mayor? Well, ordinarily, it should be the mayor. But he is a regional minister. So if something that you think your subordinates should do, and is not doing, and is working against you, you can step in. And I believe that is exactly what he's doing. But when you know, we started our work and we were doing well. People were chasing us. Later on, when they calmed down, they understood what we were doing. Later, when we go through that, you understand it. Isn't it possible yeah, that you, 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 were an, you were an institution? It was possible for you to do it. Yes. Does it matter who it is that then becomes mayor of Accra in a bid to, you know, do this kind of thing? We have a different person as regional minister, but I'm just wondering. Does it matter who it is? Oh, it does really. It does matter. The ma you know, the one who is clothed with the legal authority to do what the regional minister is doing is the mayor and his team. He has a whole institution. And when the regional minister started, when he started, he invited me. That was when we were out of Accra, and then some a meeting that was held two, three days ago to look at how we can, you know, put together the legal anchor for what, you know, that is by for what he is pursuing now. So well, you're happy with what he's doing so oh, yes, far? Yes, yes. You're happy with what he's doing? He's on course. He's on course. But how sustainable is this? He has a four-year mandate, mm -hmm. but how, I mean, it's not sustainable. <laughs> It is not only this one. You see what, if you permit me, what we learned from 81, 82, when uh, the revolution took over, the way the local governance was started, we didn't have uh, common phone from anywhere to support anything. And then you look at the structure that was there and when, what I benefited from most, and I will always, you know, thank God for the life of Mr. Isikwe, who opened up. And this is a former mayor of, a Accra. Former mayor of Accra. Yeah. The strongest then under Kwame Nkrumah. At the time that we started, we found in the file of the regional ministry that they started something to see what support they can get from our side. And we noticed that they started something with German, the West German, then West German government. So we picked it. I thought we've cleared all the things because we were discussing just the tip of the iceberg. We decided to see what can be done. We link up with them. And something which helps in local government administration that you cannot benefit from if we are operating the way we are operating. We call it sister city relations. The Accra District Rehabilitation Project was anchored by that. When the World Bank came in on certain aspects of it and we needed to go and hire. The money that they would bring, you had to hire, you know, experts. And I was, I went on twin Accra with Chicago, Accra City and Chicago uh, relationship. And it paid off. So the competencies that we needed, and we thought, that it would be too expensive if we should go and hire them. Through the sister city relationship, I told Mayor Washington then, and 
Social local government is so important that people leave Congress to go and run. Mayor Washington had just left Congress and was run, run as mayor for Chicago in the morning. He gave me all the technical people that I needed, six of them. All that they needed was if we could pay their airfare. And we told the World Bank, they were so pleasantly surprised. And they paid for them to come. They came, helped us. So to cut this long story short, we'll talk about this thing the more. I believe that we will have to, we'll come a long way. And we should stop appointing people. As like I heard the president made some comments about why he even asked that the referendum should be held and it was truncated by some demonstrations and other things. It wasn't truncated by the demonstrations. There was a criticism about the question put forward about the election of MMDCs. I don't immediately remember the question, but it seemed to suggest that would you allow the election of DCEs or MMDCEs on that on a partisan basis. What people wanted was just an election. But it can never partisanship. It can never be everywhere. We are not inventing the wheel. It can never be not on partisan basis. Never. Uh -huh. So that I so well, that is what never. people that is what because already the assemblies are partisan, it's an open secret. However, what people want is people don't necessarily need to represent, they must demonstrate that they are capable. I think that was the, the criticism of that. And then there were these demonstrations as the after effect. That was from the point of view of total ignorance. I was a practitioner. And almost there's no, you know, few countries in, even uh, islands who went there, had uh, conferences. Go and find out from everywhere. Local government is partisan. People, people are talking about, we not take so, how can we deal with it? You can only deal with, with this. We not take so. You can only so deal people deal with used to use examples such as, so what happens if the government wins in a particular region, mm -hmm. yet the person chosen in that metropolis or district or municipality is not in alignment with the regional person who has the Local government, the, the, there are rules and regulations and the role that they have to play. It has nothing to do with the government, even the president. If the president does not come from the same check out, check out. So, so, so obviously that led to the truncation of that process. But for you, you believe that we must come to the point where we elect um, MMD. Yeah, because the, I am very sure that the president did his homework and knew that elsewhere, even Liberia, Sierra Leone, and other places, is on partisan basis. It's on partisan basis because there's a lot. It is a microcosm of central government. It is a microcosm of central government. I've seen it. We have gone to conferences. We have, you know, uh, uh, even I have about the uh, Staffordshire County Council. We had sister relationship with them and for a certain purpose. And Newfoundland in Canada, we have sister relationship. So, so what would you want to tell Ghanaians then? Because obviously from what you, from the way you're talking, you want to see that this is, becomes an elected position so that people are held to account and deliver on the mandate. When we took over, when I took over Accra, those days we were other chairmen of city councils, of chairmen of urban councils across Ghana. And after a while, it was decided that we had to change into district assemblies where some people will be elected. And ideally, when the issue was discussed, ideally, election should have been absolute. And a team was put together. Justice Arman was the leader. And when the, we started talking about the issue, people, and it was organized, this, this assembly thing, though. And uh, the composition was be, you elect some people and 30% who have to be appointed. So based on the competencies that you don't have, when you look at the resumes of those who have been 
elected, you have to go and approach people to come and fill them. When we started, people started criticizing. Some people, they would go there and scatter. We, when we, sorry, we also organized to make sure that they never scattered any of our meetings. And we went through. And straight to your thing, what again? So essentially, Ghanaians need to change their mindset. When the decision is taken, a lot more education should take place for people to understand. You no, know, because in many, many, many jurisdictions, you want to be a governor. Have you ever operated as a mayor? They want to see. And how well did you do? Quite often, the people who emerge as governors, as you know, uh, become uh, bid for presidency in many, many jurisdictions. You, when you were the governor of Accra, what did you do? Were you able to do ABC? They write to us. They want to see what you have able to do. But I will humbly appeal to Ghanaians to look into this again. At a certain point, we need to bring this on board. And there are certain nitty gritties that would, time will not permit us. When we have time, full time, then people will understand it more. People are, you know, sitting, you see, uh, yeah, yeah, this also, uh, you see it more in the district. When we went on this tour, we met all the MMDCs, we met chiefs and other things, and people, somebody who has heard me before, raised the issue and I move them into it. I will give you a thorough list from all the MMDCs, the chiefs that we have to do something about. They will call me for guidance because there's so much money out there. But we are not leveraging them. We are not leveraging them. We the, we'll put everything on Ministry of Finance. I met the finance minister, you people, you have to do something about this because the properties that we had in Accra, we'll have to talk about Accra, all those things will come. When we took over, they have and I was in charge of the whole of Accra, not Accra divided the way it is. A final bit on this is we still have to deal with decongestions, waste management issues. Are you sad that 30 years after the fact, in fact 40 years after the fact, we're still having to ask people to move from Agbubloshi to Ajin Kutoku or move from Agbubloshi to uh, Gumwa somewhere? Do you know about that thing? I think we'll discuss it when... We yeah, come to, yeah, about yeah, because that's just going to another thing. Who built Ajayi Kutuku? But Agbulosi was to be there. So it's an old plan. It's an old plan. An old plan. Mm -hmm. And where, where Agbulosi is today used to be the hub of uh, fitters all over the mess, the place up. And the decision was taken. You remember that uh, Iron City was built towards Kaswa using uh, social security. Funding, they were the ones who funded it. It was part of the program that we started. And when we started this thing, we were zooming. The World Bank gave us 600, they approved 670 something million to finish with that whole thing. You know, when it rains 24 hours on the mountains and no drop in Accra, 24 hours, Accra gets flooded, the circuit and other things get flooded. And when you look at the Nkrumah's plan that we picked, Nkrumah had moved all the people from the place. And you go to uh, Holland, it's so beautiful when you have you know, these uh, rivers and things running through the city and all that. All those things have been planned. And they, when it rained, they were managing the water from the mountains. So a portion of it was created for irrigation out there. And the water had to find its way into the ocean. And all these things, uh, when you come, I'll show you that thing. So, so essentially, with all the decongestion and waste management and all the plans, the regional minister should continue and, and remain. Yeah, especially on. the people selling on pavements and other things had to be. We should continue to deal with that. Let's come to sports because I know that's an area you love very much. We've just completed the Olympic Games. Ghana was there. Mm -hmm. I think we had 14 athletes, mm -hmm. 30 officials. Mm -hmm. That's a separate conversation about people complaining that there were more officials than athletes. But I guess the main conversation now is we came back with one bronze medal. Mm -hmm. In your time, there were two Olympics. I think there was what? Atlanta? 
and then there was Sydney. Now that you can sit and look back, what are we doing wrong? Which is why we are not doing well on the medals um, circuit. If uh, a competition is organized for kinky sellers and you have not trained, you've not been trained by anybody, you didn't have the materials to train and you go to that competition, what do you get? We, we didn't have uh, facilities that we needed to have and we didn't sleep over it. We moved with the help of um, Phillips because I found out that all these countries which have the facilities for all the games were not provided by the government. There are, you know, uh, countries or organizations around the globe who, you know, helps in doing this. Shouldn't we be doing more so that we can see results in terms of medals on the global stage? Mm. Yeah, what the situation is that we found that when I went there, that we didn't have the institutions and the facilities that we used to train these athletes. And there are those who, because they are athletes, people will lobby for them to get scholarships. But at the end of the day, they are not the only ones who will go. You need people from Ghana, but when they finish their courses, they have to pay for whatever the sponsorship came from and so on. So, so we decided that, look, we needed facilities. When I took over Accra Sports Stadium in the, uh, 1992, this day and age, there were no, you know, people were not sitting on the type of chairs that they sit on today. You go to command say the same. Something had to be done. And then we decided, that, look, with uh, these athletics, the Olympic Games and things, we have a lot of potential young men who can bring us something. So I was advised by some of the uh, sports administrators that we met in conferences outside as to how they made it. In Zimbabwe, I was there. The president told me, because that president, uh, PR, happened to be my cousin, a Ghanaian. And he worked even in daily graphic for a long time. So we so close. He showed us how you know, the money to build the kind of stadium that they have. And so we got to know that Phillips, we could consult Phillips. We consulted them and they came on board handy, took us around about 60 stadia to show us what have been put in place and how they did it. And then we, you know, came down and they were saying that look, after going around. They organized a um, meeting with businessmen and women that they know. They call it Roadshow. The banks and others came. And we discussed it for them to come and build these facilities. Ghana being the center of West Africa. When you build such a facility, you are targeting 360 million people. Now I think it's more. And they were so excited about it because they've been trading with us in other things here, not at this level. We showed them Philip things that we used to buy, their irons and things that we still even buy. So we did the first road show, and then it was decided that we should acquire land for the purpose. I know we have now we have the Bukom Boxing Arena. We have the um, hockey arena, which was a passion of former president Mills, for instance. For and Mills, uh, yes. yes, but I guess the question I'm trying to ask is, if you were sports minister today, what different approach would we adopt? Because it seems the, the support from corporates and all that, it's not sustainable. We need to put our people in a program and sustain them such that they can run professional or do whatever professional sport for at least 10 years. Because once they leave school, it's difficult. It's difficult and, and we will never get medals if we continue to just rely on these kinds of external supports.
No, but that's what we're talking about. The facilities first, and I'll come to that intersports. That was so popular years back. The schools intersports, both soccer, athletics, and things like that. And then we are th we, we're talking about the international distance. You needed the facilities. And money was put into it. Even We don't have the facilities here, but is it too much for government? You've identified this talent. Just can't we put them in a... Even if they are abroad, at least, once they're being catered for. It's not, it's not easy. Well, those that are abroad at the time they're being catered for, I'm sure they're still catering for them. But I'm saying that without proper facilities. Today, you see all the uh, various um, soccer academies didn't happen by accident. I lobbied the uh, gentleman in um, Holland. That I thought that we were going to find out how they were, they were doing well because every neighborhood had you know, uh, an academy. And Ghana did, um, on that 17 and things that we're getting, we're getting most of the players from Tema, because Tema, when we come build Tema, every neighborhood had a playing field, school playing field, school playing field. So the children had a, some place to work, to play. And I'm saying that we, the cost, after we uh, targeted these uh, academies, and all the young boys asked them, encouraged them, get an academy. Then, so I acquired the 700, I'm sure in the news, not too long, they've forgotten about it, 700 acres of land in Nungwa of the motorway, the 100 acres in Pram Pram. And we're good, not only for football, 20, per, 20 acres was for football. The rest were passed in 2020, 2020. and then Olympic size uh, swimming pool. Because there are swimmers, people, when you go to the harbor, that's everything happy. People can take a cat, those are the boys who take a cat of fish, that jump into the sea and carry it to the other end, to the artisanal place, and so on and so forth. So you need to have facilities first. We tried to build, you know, uh, rebuild the Accra Sports Stadium, build Kumasi and other places. You have to. And Government budget, when you are privy to it, there's no way government will be able to do some of these things. So for football, I mean, your thoughts? Yes, I mean, there's been a lot of football talk today also because uh, Accra House of Oak uh, won the double. I, are you an Accra House of Oak fan? I was a player of Accra House of Oak. Oh, I didn't know we, that we you were start, a player. We, we started the, um, the second division, Auras, with Polo and others, and I stopped. What I was, you know, going to do my advanced courses in accounting and things, I stopped because it was... It wasn't working out. It wasn't working maybe, out. Maybe if that had been now, you wouldn't do that because football brings a lot of money uh, for individual yeah, players. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> do you miss being a member of parliament? You were in parliament for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Do you miss it? I don't, I don't think that there's anybody who has been in parliament for even 10 years and misses it. Wow. The challenges, you wake up in the morning, People's school fees. The pressure. The funerals, every, my, the funerals. Every Saturday I attend about six, seven funerals. And quite often, you have to contribute substantially. And when you, you know, so ask members of parliament, they'll tell you. Nobody misses it. And people talk about, you know, uh, end of service benefit. Yes, Gracia, yes, Gracia. What is yes, Gracia? When you take a loan to buy the vehicle, they deduct from, they deduct from your salary every month. Then when you are leaving, at the end of the year, the balance, there's no way the deductions will pay for the car. So when you are leaving, at the end of the year you are leaving, whatever your ex Russia is, they use it to clear it. So you don't miss being a member of parliament, but one thing you seem to be focusing a lot on is the almighty God now. You're an evangelist. Mm -hmm. So that adds on to all the other things you do. The thing for the city, it was my great grandfather who sent Methodism to Pram Pram when he came 1835 Cape Coast. 
Then, for the two, Accra, for the six, my great grandfather was a merchant who shot, used to shuttle between Accra and uh, Pram Pram. So he joined Freeman and then lobbied the leaders who and established Methodism out there. At that time, my direct grandfather, my mother's father, was the man of the Pram Pram. You know, the discipline of those days, the father ordered him to abdicate, take over the school as a teacher, and also cut case. I have all the records here. So all of us. So my mom pushed me to do, so I did theology. I, would, uh, I have master's, master's in, in, yeah, theology. in theology, and I love preaching. Mm, there's a lot that guides us when you are in the Lord. Right. Mm. And that's a nice way to end. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable welcome. Evangelist E.T. Mensa. Uh, Many thanks for sharing your perspectives mm. with us here on First Take. You are welcome.